Thank you everybody for joining. Today's webinar is sponsored by Extend Data, Zebra Technologies, and ScanSource. So just to begin with, we want to introduce you to Extend Data. Who are we? We are, uh, we've been around since 2002 and have been helping uh, ski areas and resort hospitality customers since then. We have five areas of the organization that we specialize in. Mobile computing, software development, we have a total care professional services, and wireless integration. And then today, we'll be talking specifically within our area of identification and tracking solutions. Greg, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about Extend Data's value proposition? I would love to. Thank you, Georgia. And welcome to everyone to the uh, Extend Data Monarch Mountain RFID case study. Appreciate you guys taking the time. I know this is a very busy time of year for you ski resorts that's getting ready for the next ski season. It actually snowed last night here in Colorado up on uh, Mount Evans, so <laughs> the scene is not too far away. Um, so the, uh, the slide here represents our corporate value proposition, and certainly for the the ski industry, you know, our value proposition is to improve our resort customers' business performance through our mobile Wi-Fi and ID tracking solutions um, that track people, transactions, a variety of assets, such as Monarch's rental equipment inventory. And certainly our success is measured by the, you know, the gains that our resort customers are able to achieve in being able to be more productive and growing the revenue, profitability, and certainly in their customers' satisfaction as well. I love this slide. Uh, this is this represents uh, most of our ski resort customers across North America. There's over 65 on this list, and uh, so we have resorts all the way as far north as Alias Resort outside Anchorage, Alaska, all the way across Canada, Western U.S., Central U.S., Northeast U.S. So um, a lot of resort customers. And I'd like to just say a special thanks to Chris Maloof, controller at Monarch Mountain, who's going to present here in, in a bit. I've got five or six slides to go through, but we've highlighted Monarch here um, on, our, on this slide because they're one of our newest resort customers. Um, and we have provided a variety of solutions to our resort customers since our founding in 2002, and really it's been around a lot of uh, mobile computing solutions for barcode and RFID applications, Wi-Fi infrastructures, indoor, outdoor, point-to-point -point stuff, um, ticket and card printing solutions, once again, barcode and RFID as well. Before I get to this slide, one thing I do want to mention as well is we are, Extend Data has been since our, our founding a very active NSAA supplier member, that's the National Skier Association. Um, we went to every single, um, as, as a supplier member with a booth at all the national shows every year and all the winter western conferences as well as the East Winds occasion as well. Uh, what is Mobile Conductor? Uh, great question. Uh, basically, Mobile Conductor is a, a framework we created. It's a, it's a foundation for leading mobile solutions for many applications, including what this case study is all about, uh, you know, a mobile RFID rental equipment inventory application for ski and snowboard rental gear um, you know, at resorts and rental shops. And what it is not, just so everyone knows as well, it's not a check-in, check-out rental system. It was designed to be a bolt-on or add-on solution to any existing barcode check-in, check-out system. It could be standalone as well, but uh, that's not how it was originally designed. Kevin spent a fair amount of time on this slide to go over the, the application process and kind of how we set this whole system up and created it. Um, there's kind of four key elements here, as you can see. One is the RFID tagging of assets, setting up the inventory with the RFID, RFID asset inventory, and then mobile conductor and mobile application as well. Um, Start off with the RFID tagging of the assets. It really all starts with the RFID tag. Uh, in this case, we use a an alien inlay or chip, if you will, and embed that in a in a rugged label. And we're using the UHF RFID technology. It's a 900 megahertz. Um, it's similar to what Bell Resorts is using, some other resorts is using for lift access to UHF technology. Um, we did do many tests with the, the tags and the inlays to come up with the optimum one for the rental application. And we ended up with, again, an alien inlay that is spec down to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we have that embedded in a rugged polyester material with a very aggressive and rated outdoor adhesive. Um, and we ended up with a, for Monarch's application, a 3-inch by 1-inch label. And if you look on these two pictures as part of the slide, you'll see a label on a helmet 
and a label on a snowboard, actually, and that's a three-inch by one-inch label. Uh, we found that was the optimum one for the reading of the RFID, and since there's a limit of space on all the, the pencil gear as well, that was the optimum tag. Uh, we've also done some, some tests and deployments of a two-inch by one-inch RFID label and another one of our ski resort customers, and while that works great as well, the three by one just provides a little bit longer read distance. Um, so setting up the inventory with RFID. Uh, well, Chris will provide some more details here in a minute, kind of how we set up all the rental inventory with RFID. Um, we'll go back up a little bit. So we first determined what the primary category or data elements were going to be for this new RFID asset inventory, and it closely worked, it worked closely with Monarch to meet their requirements. We decided on the following primary data elements for the RFID database. Chris, it all starts with the RFID asset number, which becomes the unique license plate for each asset, if you will. And then we also included <coughs> Monarch's current asset barcode number uh, as part of the database as well, so that way we can cross-reference between the RFID number and their current asset barcode number. <coughs> then we added a type, such as a ski or a ski boot or helmet or snowboard or whatever it might be, and then vendor, uh, the manufacturer, if you will, and then the model, the size, the year purchase, the status, such as if that asset is active, lost, stolen, um, sold, whatever it might be. And then an assigned location, which is very useful for those resorts that may have, or locations that may have more than one rental shop, so we can track those assets by a you know, particular location or rental shop. And then the description, which kind of includes the, the type of vendor, the model, just another classification for data element. Then we added two other categories um, as part of the mobile inventory application, which was the last scan location, and the last scan date in time. Uh, uh, so we determined kind of the license plate numbers. You can see from this tag as well. On our case, we started out with a an A triple zero and a four seven eight zero. But that is on this tag you see on this on this slide. <clears throat> that is actually the the barcode number for the RFID asset. It's also the RFID asset. So they're one and the same. And we use that barcode in Monarch's case to set up the initial inventory. So basically, as they're setting up the, the RFID inventory, they apply this label to the asset, whatever it is. In this case, we show a helmet and a, a snowboard. And they actually use a, a USB barcode scanner connected to a PC or a workstation, whatever it might be, and scan that into this new RFID database. Um, once again, the the inlay and the barcode on this label is identically the same. Um, and then what um, <clears throat> Monarch did is using their spreadsheet, they created this, this new RFID asset inventory. Once that was all completed, and they had nearly 5,000 assets in total. Chris will go over that in more detail. Uh, once that was all done, we imported that into our, our mobile conductor uh, ski rental inventory system. Um, so once we... Um, had that application set up in the in the mobile conductor, um, then we can. And for Monarch's case, we can actually do it. We could deploy it, uh, did for them, with the on-premise or in-premise on their server. We could also deploy it as we rehost it or make it a SaaS or software as a service as well. Um, and our mobile application does require a a Wi-Fi connection uh, for the mobile device. And in Monarch's case, they did have their rental shop already set up with a our Wi-Fi access point. So now the RFID tags have been applied to Monarch's assets, and we've imported those into our RFID database. Uh, we're ready to form a, a mobile inventory. What I'll do at a very high level is just kind of go through what our solution does with the, the mobile inventory application, which is really the, the heart of this whole system we developed. And we, once again, we developed this for, for a resort that has either a single rental shop or multiple rental shops. So the first step to perform a mobile inventory is you got the mobile computer, and I'll talk a minute about what that device is we certified. We got the secure log on via the Wi-Fi to our application on the mobile computer. Once logged on, the application, uh, mobile application, automatically downloads the entire RFID inventory database. In Monarch's case, it's nearly 5,000 assets to the mobile computer. Um, and once that's done, you've got all those assets on your mobile computer, so you know not only the total number of assets you have to go inventory, but you also know a breakdown of of how many snowboards you have, and even how many Burton snowboards you have, or how many Solomon skis you have. So all that database is on the mobile computer. Um, 
So now that you're on the mobile device, you get a menu, a main menu. So if you get one rental shop, it defaults to that. If you've got multiple, you select which rental shop or location you're in. And then the next step is to go to what we call our filters menu. This is kind of the power and the, the, the uh, secret sauce, if you will, of our whole solution. When you're on that screen, you can determine if you want to try to inventory everything all at once, where you walk around your rental shop and look for all Monarch's case, 5,000 assets, or if you want to drill down and say, look, just for snowboards or just for particular uh, vendor of snowboards, like just for snowboards, you can do that as well. So once you've done that inventory process, then you would uh, go back to the main menu, do a synchronization, and basically it synchronizes your inventory back up to our server. And once that's done, then you can actually go into that, that server and do all kinds of data manipulation and look at what data you've got and, and then export that to another system as what Monarch will be doing as well. So, okay, this slide is, uh, I'll go with this briefly. This is the device. It's called the, it's the Motorola MC9190Z, which is the UHF RFID rugged mobile computer. And uh, you can see here the key bullet of it is uh, Bulbasar. The, it has a high RF sensitivity, which means that it really has a very good read range for the UHF RFID tag. Um, we tested quite a number of devices. Uh, this was the one that we already had a lot of experience with and knew it was a good device, but we did test some other ones. But this device has been certified on our RFID rental inventory solution. Um, however, I want to add, too, that we are in the, in the midst of testing other devices, too, and expect in the next couple of months to at least have one more device certified to give our uh, resort customers uh, and rental shop customers a, an option. Okay, this is my last slide, but if I turn it over to Chris, and, and sort of like the questions, and, and uh, we'll sort of entertain any other questions you guys have as well. Um, so this slide basically, and there's more benefits than there are just on this slide, but you know, the very first thing we put on here, and Chris can attest this as well, but you know, the mobile equipment inventory, it really is very fast and very accurate. You can inventory several hundred assets in just a few seconds. I mean, it really is very, very quick. Um, we designed our system, too, to help reduce asset loss, where we can you know, relatively easily locate lost and misplaced equipment uh, with a limited physical search. And one way we do that is a we call a Geiger counter concept or approach. It's on the mobile device. If you know what the missing RFID asset number is, you can log plug that into our application. And as you walk around, you're looking for that. You get within typically 20 to 30 feet or so, uh, maybe it's a tiny rental shop, maybe this is a peaceful area. So as you go search for that, um, it will start to beep as it sees that, and you get closer to it, it will beep a little bit louder and a little bit a counter on there too that you can see on the screen. So that's pretty pretty cool uh, concept. Um, and also then you know, improve customer rental experience. So um, you guys know running a rental shop that the more frequent inventory process does provide better visibility into your inventory levels, which can give you better service to your customers. Uh, so once again, that's the three primary benefits, and I think Chris can elaborate on that as well. Um, I want to introduce Chris Maloof. Um, we worked with Chris now for, for several months, and a special thanks to Chris for participating not only in this webinar case day with us, but also thanks for being our customer. Um, so with that, turn it over to Chris, and next slide for Chris. Or just uh, first slide here, just a couple quick stats on uh, on our little mountaineer. Uh, I think the key ones are, uh, like Greg had mentioned, we're looking to um, uh, to track and count uh, just shy of 5,000 items. Um, currently, we only have the one rental shop location, but we can expand that to multiple uh, locations if need be. Um, first slide here, uh, we had a couple problems or challenges that I wanted to address. Uh, first and foremost, uh, our physical inventory count process was uh, extremely labor intensive and very time consuming. Um, we were dedicating about 200 man hours, and that was a crew of about four to five people, uh, almost for a week solid uh, each season trying to count um, every single piece of equipment we had under the roof over there. Um, in addition to that, uh, the information we were getting back was a little bit inaccurate, so I wanted to address that. Um, in addition to trying to expedite the process, um, I wanted to try and tighten up our internal controls as well. Uh, the personnel that are responsible for the inventory uh, should not be the ones, you know, conducting the physical count. Um, unfortunately, our accounting staff uh, is relatively small, so we unfortunately couldn't shoulder uh, that responsibility and get things counted in a timely fashion. Um, and I also wanted to uh, get the uh, the ability to count uh, more frequently, as opposed to once a year, um, with us only being open. 
uh, you know, five months out of the year, if we've got uh, an inventory shrinkage problem, I want to be able to identify that uh, sooner than later. Um, and this solution actually uh, did satisfy both those criteria. Um, I knew the, uh, the technology was out there, just had not heard of it uh, being applied in this capacity yet. So uh, a couple broad strokes on how the process went for us. Uh, we started with um, our check-in, check-out system database, um, dumped that information into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, we then had um, our rental crew go through and tag, uh, remove all items from the shelves and tag each individual item um, and then populate that into the Excel spreadsheet. So we had both the barcode that we use for our check-in, check-out system as well as our new RFID tag number, our license plate number, and then all associated information. So vendor, uh, model number, size, uh, fiscal year was purchased, et cetera. Um, we did a little bit of data cleansing in that process, uh, you know, making sure that uh, uh, the vendor name was spelled uh, consistently throughout, uh, things along those lines. Uh, once we had our database all complete, uh, like Greg had alluded to, uh, they had then uploaded that into the mobile conductor database. Um, and then uh, Greg and his crew came out, uh, tested the, uh, the equipment. Um, I had a couple uh, speed bumps for the first time, went back and uh, spoke with the uh, Motorola folks. Uh, with one of the programs that's in the actual handheld, and Greg can probably speak a little more intelligently about that. Um, got it hashed out, came back out and tested it, and it works great, uh, extremely fast, uh, very fast. Um, and our accuracy rate is uh, exponentially better than what it was in the past. Uh, so expected results, um, you know, again, 90% uh, decrease in, in process uh, duration or time spent. I think that's a very conservative effort, or excuse me, estimate. Um, what did take a crew of four to five people about 200 hours, now will probably take about three hours total to a physical inventory count. Uh, so satisfied uh, that criteria I was looking for. Um, we do have one challenge uh, simply with the way that we've got our equipment stowed. Um, our rental manager does a great job of uh, optimizing the limited space we have over there. And he's got a lot of uh, our skis are actually shoehorned in pretty tight, uh, which reduces the read range on the RFID. Um, but we've got a simple workaround around that. We'll simply remove a couple rows of skis that are hung vertically. Um, I'll be able to walk in between the rows, and uh, that'll increase that read rate uh, uh, to where we want it. Um, you know, in addition to that, we're now able to do a cycle count on a monthly basis, uh, so satisfied that. Um, we don't have to wait till the end of the season to see if we've got you know, a shrinkage problem or we've got equipment walking off or, or what the situation is. Uh, we're also able to find misplaced equipment. Uh, like Greg had mentioned, the, uh, the Geiger counter functionality uh, you've got one piece of equipment that uh, it didn't pick up. You can insert that um, into the handheld, and the tone that comes out of the handheld will get uh, uh, faster as you get closer to that item. Uh, actually, we tested that as well, and it picked up an item that was 30 feet away that was a set of skis up in our kind of mezzanine area, if you will. Uh, so I was pretty impressed with that as well. And then Greg had also mentioned we've got increased reporting functionality too. Uh, with the database, and this is without any customization, just the canned reports that came with it. Um, you know, I can now identify a um, number of items by vendor, um, date purchase, type of item, size, um, you know, et cetera. So uh, we've got a lot more information at our fingertips. So. We're going to wrap up today's session, but Greg, you wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit more about what we offer to the ski industry? Sure, yeah, just briefly, once again, sorry folks for going over the, the 10 extra minutes. Um, and once again, feel free to reach out to Extend Data. I know in the next slide there will be our, our website information and uh, email address and phone number, that kind of stuff. So just very briefly, and once again, um, we, since our founding, 13, we're in our 13th year now, we've been very active in the ski industry. So you know, we've, we've done a lot of RFID, not only UHF RFID, but HF RFID as well as far as you know, mobile devices that support the um, the, the gate systems, the ski data gates and uh, those kind of gates for the RFID piece of that. Um, and mobile computing, so this has been kind of our primary thing we've done for resorts. It's been the rugged mobile computers for lift access. Um, a variety of different manufacturers and devices, barcode and RFID. Uh, we do have done a lot of wireless LAN infrastructure across resorts, whether it's it's for, you know, inside for locations, whether it's for outside for uh, lift access coverage, point-to-point like -point links up the mountain, point to multi-point links, uh, those kind of things, as well as a lot of ticket and pass and receipt printing for resorts for you know ticket printing, for receipt printing, uh, cards um, for resorts for uh, season passes, whether it's just standard cards with MagStripe or cards with uh, UHF RFID chips in them with 
bag stripes as well. So uh, that's kind of our, our primary thing to be done to the resorts. All right, great. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And thanks, Chris and Greg, for presenting this information for our audience. Once again, I'd like to thank our partners, Zebra and ScanSource, for sponsoring today's event. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out at info at extenddata.com or give us a call at our 866 number. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.